So here we are at um, January 14th, 2021. The last time I worked on this loon was in July of 2017. And I was taken away for a commission and I kept getting commissions and I've finished those commissions up now and I'm going to complete the oil painting of this somewhat decorative smoothly smoothie. It's um have all the feathers carved into it uh, but no texturing. So it's kind of smooth and, and not smooth more than usual. So I started with Japan um, paints for the base coats and during the time that this bird sat around it took a little bit of a ding here on the bill so I sanded that off and uh, I'm just gonna paint right over that you won't notice that there was a little ding anymore because it's gone uh, these are the paints that I'm using um, I use a Niagara Black um, Gamblin Bass Mat, Titanium White Bass Mat by Gamblin. These are my old paints, um, oil paints. They're Grumbacher's Finest. I have Cobalt Violet, Cadmium Yellow, Yet Medium, Phthalo Green, Cobalt Blue, Burnt Umber. And, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is mix up some uh, black or dark dark brown using my burnt umber and my cobalt blue. So I want to mention the medium that I'm using is uh, Grumbacher Turpentine in the bottle. When it's clear, no yellow tint should be on it or it is not good, it's tainted. Uh, and then Grumbacher Turpentine, I'm Gr Grumbacher Oil Painting Medium Number One, which gives you a matte finish on smooth birds and um, textured. So uh, when I start out painting um, in oils so that I don't dissolve the um, coats below, Grumbacher matte medium will dissolve the layers of paint below. So you can only really paint it full out 100% um, during the first pass. But since I already um, put base coats on, I'm going to go 50-50, which will cut um, uh, its strength and it won't uh, dissolve the layers of paint below, or at least that's the plan. So I'm going 50-50 here. And I only use a little bit at a time because it is so expensive. This bottle alone costs 10 bucks. This bottle was just over 15. So you want to use it sparingly and um, not put too much in more than you're going to use in the sitting that you have because it'll just evaporate or have to be thrown away. Uh, one of the ways you can avoid is if you need to take a break is to put a cover over your medium while you're taking a break. But by the end of the day, I usually um, wipe it all out, clean things up, because if it just sits overnight, it tends to get, um, tends to turn um, to different medium and turn color, and I don't want to deal with that. So I try to only use the amount of medium and turpentine for a sitting. Now, I've recently finished painting something, but usually 
I have to use a plier keep on handy to get my keep it in my paint box but just recently painted a blue goose head study and um, I needed this color and so these are actually easy to get into this time around so I'm using cobalt blue deep and burnt umber the combination of the two produces a really nice dark dark brown I'm trying to keep things into a nice pile. I don't want to waste too much paint. But when you're done mixing, wipe your palette knife off so it's ready for the next time around. It might cost a little bit more um, paper towel or a little more um, trouble, but it's worth it um, to have your stuff ready when you want it. So I'm just going to quick put a nice coat over this sanded area. And it'll probably take a couple of passes to get that covered up. And again, when um, I finish painting a color. When I finish painting a color, I wipe the paint out of my brush before I stick it into a medium to clean it up a little bit. And I always remember this is what I was using for the dark, dark brown. Set it aside knowing it's been used. These have all been cleaned. They're the same brushes I used when I painted the goose head. So where I'm at here is just a basic um, base coat um, colors. I did some shading on the outer edge of the um, feathers with a darker brown than what I actually started with. That gives, gives me a little bit of um, difference in color. Uh, so basically what I'm going to do is come back today and um, I am going to start laying in the white spots. Uh, it's going to take several um, passes to get a nice, to get the nice color in there, solid white can't do it all in one and when I'm using this fast mat it dries faster than regular oil so I don't squeeze out as much as I would if this is regular um, titanium uh, white uh, oil and um, I think I'm going to use a This is a, a Raphael 2 aught 2 slash 0. That means it's two steps below the size 0. And just like with acrylics, I like to use a consistency of half and half or cream. And I'm just going to start laying in the scapular feathers. <laughs> Move some of these brush. 
You don't want to have too much paint on your brush. Just be careful about laying it. Of course, the spots are smaller. This one, the feather. I'm paying attention to how these feathers were carved. It tells me, you know, the small spot on the left side of the feather is going to be covered by the feather next to it. We don't have completely um, uniform spots that wouldn't doesn't look as natural. It gets easier as you go get the larger feathers. And I tend to start on the topmost feather. And uh, move my way down. And the reason you want to use nice thin layers like this is because when you come back the next time around to give a second pass, you won't do it exactly the same. It'll be close, but it won't be exactly the same as the first pass or and the third pass won't be as you see now just going over that a second time brightened it up a lot which is what's going to happen with my subsequent coats on the spots Sometimes the first pass is kind of like roughing it in. And then each pass after that kind of cleans things up. Tempernay carved me a balloon in flight as a gift and he couldn't believe I like carving loons as, and painting loons as much as I do because they uh, have so many spots. He said he went almost went nuts painting them and he never ever paint another carve or paint another loon again. So I I'm pretty honored to have the one he did carve. Being it was carved for me makes it even more special. I noticed that the shape and size of the spots on the loon scapular feathers can really vary. So 
I'm keeping it in camera view. I have my phone here so I can remotely work my camera. Sometimes I'm disappointed because I finish sitting or a, um, with the camera only to uh, find out that it didn't it wasn't in focus or the lighting wasn't right or something wasn't good and, and there's no going back I already did that step so Sometimes it can be hit or miss when it comes to video. But I'm trying to get this for you. Those who want to learn some techniques in painting in oils, painting loons, doing decorative smoothies. I'm liking the um, absorption of the Japan paint temp, um, that I used as the base coat. It's really messy to work with though, I have to say that. The jars have to pop off the tops and it's not easy. And you want to make sure that the size of the spots within the row are pretty uniform across the that row. 
You don't want to do a little tiny small spot when all the others are well I might do one that's barely showing like right here just catch on the, a little bit of the feather and I uh, when I go back for more paint when you use the Raphael this is a really springy point and um, I roll the excessive paint off as I lift off of the um, palette, which is a glass pie plate, and that um, oops, takes off the excess paint, for the usually. There we go. I don't want it to be really dark white, or bright white, I should say, yet, because I do want to come back with more passes. Now if I was doing a production piece, maybe I would want the speed of one um, stop spots, but um, that's not what I'm doing here. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just not the plan for this loon. And this loon is going to Wayne, who owns River City Creative Mirror and Glass, so he can bring it up to his cabin. He doesn't know he's getting it. It's a thank you for employing my mother for 30 years. And during the last two years of her employment, she couldn't drive anymore, and they came and got her every morning and dropped her off after work every day that she worked, three days a week, sometimes four, and she couldn't have worked, she couldn't have stayed independent for as long as she did if they had not been so generous. Christian based, based company with just really, really wonderful employees and owners. So, knowing how much Wayne loves loons, um, it would be appropriate for him to have my 20-year loon. I call it the 20-year loon again because or it's actually a 25-year loon now. <laughs> I'm going to take a little bit of white and extend it too far off or too down, far down. Anyway, I used to carve this at World, started carving it at World when I demonstrated for Finks Co. And um, demonstrated their bits and their tools and I carved on it for three years, or three days each year. And um, put it away till next World Show. I pull it back out and pick up where I left off, and I did that over about 10 year top period at the World Championships. And then things stopped coming, and I put it away. And then I pulled it back out in 2017, and I was going to finish it off as a demo. I'm painting a smoothie in oils. I got interrupted with the commission. Sometimes you gotta make money. So, having been all caught up, I pulled this back up and I thought it would be a great video demo.
to show you how I actually paint the feathers of a loon on a loon. Adjusting the size across the row, a little bit of the shape. A lot of times I'll do something, paint something on, and then I'll sit back and squint my eyes just to see, you know, how does it look. And squinting can make it easier to see what it might look like when you're done by uh, eliminating some of the detail. It looks like um, you're viewing it from a distance. Judges who are judging decoys and don't have that full 20 feet to judge at a distance for, I don't know, maybe the venue is too small or other circumstances keeping them from viewing it from the distance that they're supposed to. So if you squint your eyes, you can replicate distance. And, uh, Viewing many things, it eliminates detail, it shows, um, even if you're looking at the live bird, squinting eliminates the feather detail to the point where you can start seeing the feather groups, the individual groups, because the individual feathers aren't a distraction. A little trick that can be used. You also try to only go as far as <clears throat> I have time to sit down for halfway. Uh, I've got quite a bit of time today so I'll do this whole scapular group and then I'll do the, the uh, opposite scapular group.